everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. I'm Jolene Canan. I'm delighted to present the podcast this week where we will uh, review uh, a bumper weekend of Munster Camogie Championship action with four Tipperary teams in action. Uh, on Saturday, our minors and our seniors um, were playing, while on Sunday it was the turn of our juniors and under 16, 18. So first up on Saturdays, our minors travelled to Fiedemore GA in Limerick to take on Limerick. Um, unfortunately, they bowed out with the Munster Championship, um, beaten by a single point, 11 points to 10. Um, so if you remember, this minor team had won all the group stage games in the Iron Championship and then uh, were beaten by Cork by just a single point in the all Iron semi-final. Cork went on to win the all Iron final. So then the Munster campaign, they played Cork in the first round, the game went to extra time, and again, were beaten by the narrows of margins. So uh, on Saturday then, they had a chance to get back into a Munster semi-final um, when they took on Limerick, but it wasn't to be. Um, despite beating Limerick quite comprehensively in the group stages that are in championship, this was a totally different game, much closer, both teams very even throughout. Limerick led a half time six points to five. And um, there was a bit of controversy in the first half. Was well, not the game with myself, but I believe Grace Maloney uh, scored a goal which was disallowed. Um, the umpires said it was wide and went in through the netting. Um, so tip very disappointed with that decision. Obviously, this seemed to spurn uh, Limerick on and. Um, do you know that drove them on? They led a half time. Second half, then tip started well. Uh, Lisa O'Connor kept them in, in touch with points from freeze. Grace Maloney also got a point from play. But I suppose the last 10 minutes, um, couldn't argue Limerick were the better side. They really drove on and um, they took their chance for victory. And it's Limerick now who play Cork in that Munster final. Then the other game that even obviously was the big game, it was the senior championship. Uh, Tiberi took on Limerick also in that game. And that game was a double header before the Limerick and Waterford senior hurling game. A brilliant initiative by Munster GA and Munster Camogie to stage these double headers. So it was fantastic to play in the two skater crowns in Limerick, play in front of a big crowd, and um, obviously a huge bonus to win to Brewery Hill. Quite comprehensive winners and um, running out winners in the end of a goal and 17 points to eight points. Tip had the aid of a strong breeze starting off and they really set the tone here on, caught the van, got free, and then. Um, you know, we had the likes of Claire Hogan, Casey Hennessy, Roisin Howard, all scoring, um, I suppose, freely there in the first half. Go to McIntyre splitting the post. Forwards uh, were really impressive. Uh, Jenny Grace, Cot Van, all six forwards got on the scoreboard before half time. But uh, by 10 minutes, we led six points to one. Uh, the point coming from Orla Kelleher. Uh, could have even been further ahead, only for some fantastic saves by the Claire Keaton and the Limerick goalie reacted really well and pulled off some great saves. Tiberi Goy, Anya Slattery, also pulled off a great save in the 18th minute. She blocked a Cuiva Costello shot and that went out to a 45 and Cuiva Costello scored that. But then Tiberi came back and hit five points in a row and really impressive shooting in the attack. Again by Casey Hennessy and Roshan Howard caught the van on the freeze. Um, so at halftime, Tiberi led... Uh, led 11 points to two. So a nine point lead there at half time. Then we came out in the second half, Steve Costello got on the scoreboard again, but they failed to build on this and really um, Tiberi kicked on and likes Claire Hogan um, added to her personal tally. She finished with um, four points altogether. Caught Van finished with four points. Roisin Howard, Casey Hennessy all scored three points each. Neve Trassi, um, Claude McClare and Jenny Grace all had a point and then in injury time a lovely pass by Claire Hogan to Eamon McGraw come on as a sub and she finished a lovely goal so that extended to Bray's lead so convincing winners there um, and they march on now to play Claire so that game is happening this Sunday at 12 o'clock in Simple Stadium that is obviously um, a double header with Claire and Cork in the Munster Senior Hurling Championship so promised to be another um, fantastic uh, occasion and we would encourage people to get out and support Tipperary. Um, you can remember it's all advanced ticket sales, so you can buy your tickets on ga.ie or in Centra, some Centra and Super Value stores. So be sure to uh, get to that match on um, on Sunday. So that's going to be a really good game. Uh, before we talk about that a bit more, we'll just look back again on the Tipperary and the Limerick back match. And after the match, I caught up with manager Bill Milani and joint captain Julianne Burke to get their reactions. Joined now by Bill Melanie, Tipperary senior manager. Bill, a uh, comprehensive victory there this evening. You must be happy. 
Yeah, delighted with the result in the end, you know, we were made work hard for it, uh, we looked a little bit rusty at times, but I thought the lads played really well, applied themselves, worked very hard, uh, especially in the tackle, you know, and stopping Limerick from hurling. We held them to a very low score for a long time, so, you know, yeah, delighted. We have a lot of improvement to do um, for this week, to be clear next week, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy with today's results, yes. And what's the overall goal for this Munster Championship? Is it, you know... Well, the, the overall goal with any competition, as you know, is to win it. Uh, um, you know, try and get a trophy into the cabinet. Uh, we'll be taking on Clare and, uh, and hopefully uh, take on Cork or Waterford after that. You know, so the goal is to try and progress, uh, get ready for the All Ireland Championship proper and try and get up a trophy along the way. And obviously, added incentive with the double headers with the Munster GA. Um, a great occasion here in two skating grounds. Ah, uh, just yeah, it's, un it's unbelievable. I, I think it's a long time coming. It should be in a lo an awful long time ago. But look, our players are, and all the Camogie players are playing Limerick and Tip today. Um, you know, delighted to be here in front of a big crowd as well. We don't see it that often, unfortunately. Uh, but the opportunity was presented, and you'd be. We're delighted to take it, you know, uh, I think it should happen every week or as often as possible, you know, and thanks to the Munster Council for, for organising and letting us in. And just know, is Cueve uh, Meyer having an up there, any update on her injury? Or? Not yet, no, it looks like a hamstring um, um, at the minute, but I have waiting for an appraisal from the physio, so um, hopefully it won't be too harsh or too hard on her. Uh, she's going really well and had a great game today, you know. Great stuff, Bill. Thank you. Yeah, Mark, joint captain of the very senior Camogie team. Julianne, you must be happy with that victory this evening. Yeah, we're delighted. Look, we came up here to, to get a win, and we knew it was going to be a tough game, and Limerick fought to the bitter end, and we're, we're just delighted to get the win and to go on to the next round. And just your overall thoughts on uh, the double headers with the Munster GA? Great initiative. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I suppose since you're small, you want to play for Tipperary, and then when you have the crowd coming in and playing in the bigger stadiums, it's fantastic. So um, it's a great initiative, and long may it last. And next weekend now, Claire, a team you haven't probably played in a while. You don't have. Have you met them this year or anything? Or? No, I'd say they might have maybe played a national challenge or whatever. So they're probably a bit kind of unknown territory to us. But um, look, they're a strong team, so we'll have to work hard, train hard during the weekend, and be up for their game again next year. So uh, fingers crossed. And a huge prize, obviously, if you beat Claire, you're true to a monster final that will be played in front of a Tipperary crowd. Um, so that's a, obviously an added incentive. Yeah, it is, but I suppose we're taking a game by game. Like I said, coming up today, we just focused on the Limerick game, so we have to go over Clare first, and, and if we do, then we're obviously in the Munster final, but our focus is on uh, next week. And your forwards in particular uh, started very brightly, um, scoring at will there. You must be happy with how they're going as a unit. Yeah, and I suppose like there's such competition in the forward line that any, any, on any different given day that any forward could be playing. So, uh, yeah, they're moving well and working really hard. Their work rate's unbelievable, but it gives us a chance at the back then now to reset again. So, um, they're flying at some there. Great stuff. Thanks, Julie. So, looking ahead to this Sunday, uh, Tip and Clare, they haven't played each other um, this year or last year in any competitive games. Um, Look, I'm expecting Clare to be a much tougher test than Limerick were. Uh, they beat Limerick in the league and they also ran Kilkenny very close. Um, so I feel that they're waiting on the long grass here for Tip. Obviously, Tip have the, the advantage probably of playing a game, have a bit of momentum that game. But I suppose disadvantages come with that too when you pick up injury injuries. And obviously, Cueva Mara went off injured the last day. Hopefully, she'll be back. I think it was a hamstring injury. Um, but hopefully, she'll be back in available for selection for for the management on Sunday. Um, Claire, obviously, are fresh going into this game, but probably haven't played a competitive game in a good while, um, which could be to their disadvantage. They will have Nevo D back for them. She was missing uh, throughout the league with a broken hand, but she's expected to return and will probably start midfield or in the forwards up front too. Then they have Emer Kelly, uh, another impressive forward, and she did very well in the league. Darren Murphy then in the goals, formidable keeper. And I suppose that's something Tipperary missed a few uh, goal chances against Limerick. And, um, you know, they'll have to be at their best if they're going to beat Darren in the goals on Sunday. So that's uh, definitely another game to look forward to. And obviously, uh, Carpet Waterford in the Munster semi final at the weekend. So whoever wins between Tip and Clare will play uh, Cork in a Munster final. That game will be before the Tipperary and Limerick uh, Munster Senior Hurling Championship game as well. So another fantastic double header coming up in a few weeks' time. Um, turning then to last Sunday, we had uh, mixed results. Uh, the juniors and under 16s were out. Unfortunately for the juniors, they were beaten. Uh, they were beaten by Clare uh, in the first round of the Munster Junior Championship. Uh, disappointment for the juniors. You know they would have liked to have won that game. Obviously, would have liked to have had a. 
a chance of some silverware and also but also get a few couple of more competitive games before the start of the All Ireland Championship, but it wasn't to be. Um, disappointing performance really from them after the the, the highs of uh, the relegation win over over Kildare. Um, so they led a half time. So despite Clare trading by three points at half time, they Clare produced a brilliant second half performance. I suppose they aided by the wind and they outscored the home side ten points to three. Um, but Tip had started well, and after 22 minutes of the first half, they led five points to one, thanks to scores from Eve Malachny from play and from freeze. And Clodagh Horgan was excellent in the first half, picked up two points from play. Um, but Clare did start to settle uh, midway through that half and um, tapped on a few scores. And uh, at halftime, there was three points in it. But, you know, the wind was quite strong, and I suppose there wasn't enough of a lead for Tip, really. So midway through the second half, Clare had equalised and then took the lead, thanks to points from Neve McQueen, Ellen Casey and Sean Akani. Um, and then I suppose at the wind, with the wind at their back, they pushed on, and um, with 53 minutes on the clock, only two points separated the sides. Uh, Clare were leading 11 points to nine. Fortunately for Tip, they failed to score after that, and um, Clare ran out 13 points to nine winners in that game. So that ends um, to Bray's involvement in the Munster Junior Championship. And um, But the tension turns now to the All-Iron Series. And I suppose they'll put in the hard work now between that now and then. And they're out then the weekend, 21st, 22nd of May, start the All-Iron Series where they're at home to uh, Cavan. So then in the afternoon, our under 16 A's were playing. They were playing in the Munster semi final. That game took place in uh, Waterford IT grounds in Carriganore in Waterford. And Tipperary had a fantastic win. Um, this means they'll play Cork on Saturday, the 7th of May, in a Munster final. The venue has to be confirmed yet. Um, so a great win by Tip at the weekend. Um, Nicola Kelly got a first half goal. And they established a 1-6-1 point lead. Um, Waterford were competitive. They were very tough. They battled hard. The final winning scoreline was 2-11 to 1-4. And I spoke to John Ryan after the match, and he said, um, you know, that didn't really reflect, I suppose, the game. It was a lot tougher, a lot closer than that. Uh, Tiberi led 1-9 to 2 points. Um, but Waterford threatened after the restart, reduced Tip's lead with a well-taken goal and a point. But the response by Tip was excellent. Lucy Purcell got two points Um in quick succession, that kind of swung the momentum back into Barry's favour. And uh, midway through the second half, Tip led 1-9 to 1-3. Um, but then Waterford only managed one more point after that, while Tip uh, really had a very good uh, final quarter. They scored 1-2 with the goal coming from Kira Hora. And that's a, um, meant the win, or the final score line was Tipperary 2-11, Waterford 1-4. So a great result for Tipperary under 16-18. That's two wins in a row and a place in the Munster uh, final now on 7th of May against Cork to look forward to. Uh, so that's reviewing the four championship games at the weekend. A busy weekend, the Munster championship action. Um, this weekend then, obviously, the big game is Clare and Tip in the senior Munster semi semi-final. That game is in Semper Stadium. But it's also a busy weekend with club action. Um, we have the adult leagues continuing every weekend. And this weekend, it's, it's a semi-final and quarter-final stage for the junior competition. So in the junior A semi-finals this Saturday, uh, 30th of April, we have Holy Cross versus Brian Brews and Kildengan versus Templemore. Now, when we're recording this podcast, I don't have uh, venues or times yet. Um, so, but obviously keep an eye on Tiberi Komogi social media and obviously club social media to confirm the venues and times. So that's Saturday, the junior A semi-finals is Holy Cross and Brian Brews, Kildengan and Templemore. Brian Brews uh, bet Laura at the weekend in the quarterfinal. The junior B2 quarterfinal, we'll see Belly Bacon Grange take on Tumi Vara at 6.45 p.m. That's on Saturday. Again, I don't have a venue. And on Sunday, the 1st of May, then we have the Junior B League quarterfinal. We have Portro and Ballingarry at 12 noon, and we have Silver Mines and Cashel at 9.45 a.m. So that's the two Junior B quarterfinals. And then the Junior B2 quarterfinal on Sunday was Shannon Rovers and McCarthy Burris at 11 a.m. So the Junior uh, League coming to semi final quarterfinal stages are all happening this weekend as well. So that's all we have for this week's Google Report podcast. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you again soon.